Well, good evening and welcome to the Midweek Word. The last three weeks we have been discussing forgiveness. The Bible tells us that we ought to forgive those who sin against us. And we keep no record of wrongs done toward us and forgive as many times as necessary, Jesus said to Peter in Matthew 18. When Peter asked him, well, Master, how many times do we forgive our brother that sinned against us? Seven times? And Jesus said, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. See, refusing to forgive a person demonstrates resentment, bitterness, and anger, none of which are traits of the believer. Biblically speaking, forgiveness is not just something that we offer, but it's also something that we receive and something we accept. We must be willing to let it go and remember it no more so that it brings reconciliation to the relationship. Remember, we are never more like God than when we can fully forgive others. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together and rightly divide the word of truth. So Holy Spirit, we yield to you because you are the teacher. So, Father, help us to forgive just as you have forgiven us in your word. And we give you all praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You know, we talk about the principle of forgiveness that, that's found in Scripture. Remember principle number one, forgive those who sin against us. Number two, forgive and be forgiven. And number three, don't forgive and you won't be forgiven. To help us on the personal side of forgiveness, God gave us one full book of the Bible, which is in Philemon, which is totally dedicated to forgiveness. But I want to give you a brief overview of Philemon. Philemon was, a, was saved through the ministry of Paul. Philemon was a slave owner, a common practice in Paul's days. See, it was, it, it was commonplace to own slaves during, a, during, during, during the Roman days. Onesimus was a slave of Philemon, and he stole from Philemon and ran away to Rome. And we'll see that later when we get to verse 17. Onesimus encountered Paul and it led to salvation. Onesimus is, is sent back to Philemon with a letter in hand and Paul, that Paul wrote. And this, and this is the book that we're going through, Philemon. This is the letter that he wrote. As we read through these scriptures, we will see forgiveness personalized in the character of forgiveness, what is the character of one who forgives? And we started that last week and we'll complete that this week. We'll go to the action of forgiveness. What action is needed to forgive? And we'll talk about the motivation of forgiveness. What motivates a person to forgive? Our last session covered some of the characters of forgiveness. I would like to reread the first seven verses of Philemon and briefly review what we covered last on, 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 in our last session. Philemon, uh, I'm going to read out the New King James Version. Verse 1, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to beloved Aperture and Occupus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God making mention of you always in my prayers, hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all the saints, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. We covered last week the first character of forgiveness, which is labors. Our forgiveness labors. Forgiveness is not just a matter of overlooking the wrong that has been done, but rather dealing with it so both parties can move on. I'll go back and read Philemon 1, 2, 3. And it reads, Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ, and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our beloved friend and fellow laborer, to the beloved Aperture and Occupus, our fellow soldier, and to the church in your house, grace to you and peace from God our Father, and our Lord Jesus Christ. See, when we talk about Philemon and Paul writing this letter, we learn that, that forgiveness to those, uh, forgiveness is experience of God's grace and God's peace. God's grace toward us forgives us, and his peace allows us to know that we are forgiven. We have the very character of God in us. 
and it, and, and, and it is for us to labor in the Father's business of forgiveness. Just as Paul described Philemon as a laborer and a joint labor with him in the work of the Lord, we must do the same. Let me remind you of the four results of failing to forgive. We know, we know what we get when we forgive, but what happens when we fail to forgive? First, failure to forgive will imprison believers in the past. If you fail to forgive, you're, you're held hostage to that person because you haven't been released. So when you fail to forgive, you are held in your past. Secondly, forgiveness produces bitterness. The longer believers dwell on offense committed against them, the more bitter they become. And third, unforgiveness gives Satan an open door. See, Paul warned us in Ephesians. He said, be angry and sin not. And don't let the sun come down on you, on your wrath, nor give place to the devil. In Ephesians, in Corinthians, he writes, and I'll read out, 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 out of a uh, out of 2 Corinthians, and I'm reading through the 2nd through the 10th verse, New King James Version. Now whom you forgive anything, I also forgive. For if indeed I have forgiven anything, I have forgiven that one of your sakes in the presence of Christ. Least Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. See, we can never be ignorant of Satan's devices. Satan used forgive unforgiveness as a, as a means to get in the back door. Fourth, forgiveness hinders fellowship with God. The last few weeks, our main Sunday service has been, we receive a message on God's habitation. But brothers and sisters, without forgiveness, there is no habitation. Our Lord Solomon warned us in Matthew, if you forgive me and their trespasses, your heavenly Father will forgive you. But if you do not forgive me and their trespasses, Neither will your father forgive you your trespasses. Forgiveness restores the believer to a place of maximum blessings from God. It restores the purity and the joy of the fellowship with God. The next character that we that we covered in, in, in Philemon was love. And read Philemon 4 and 5 out of New King James Version. Philemon's love and faith, I thank my God, making mention of you always in my prayers. Hearing of your love and faith, which you have toward the Lord Jesus Christ and toward all saints. See, Philemon's love was bidirectional. He loved God just as he loved men. Philemon had a real concern for people. When you have a heart for the others, it's easier to forgive. Love seeks opportunity to do good to all men. Just like I said in, in Galatians, in Galatians 6, be good to all men, especially toward those who are in the household of faith. Now, what I want to go to is something I have, we haven't covered yet, and another character of forgiveness, which shares. I'm going to go to Philemon, Philemon 6, and it reads, that the sharing of your faith may become effective by the acknowledgement of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. And I want to read the, uh, the, uh, the New Revised Version. And it reads, I pray that sharing of your faith may become effective when you perceive all the good that we may do for Christ. All the good that we may do for Christ. The Greek word for sharing is called konia, which is written in the verse in sharing or fellowship. To us, sharing usually means evangelism, and fellowship can you mean potluck suppers, you know, for small group meetings. But Paul did not think any of these things when, when he thought when he prayed for Philemon. Kononia is a difficult word to translate, but it incorporates the true outworking of the Christian love in the body of Christ. Fellowship that causes individual believers to belong to one another, willingly rejoicing with those who rejoice and weeping with those who weep. The word focused on Philemon's relationship with other Christians. Paul prayed that Philemon's faith would show itself in Cornelia among the believers, especially those who would meet in his home. See, Philemon had a, had a church in, in his house, which was common in, in, in those days. The faith that Philemon was called to share was both content and what he believed doctrine and the practical demonstration of his devotion to Christ. The word fellowship also anticipated Paul's coming request on behalf of the new believer 
will become part of that group. Paul prayed that Philemon would be active in this Kania, this fellowship, and this sharing. Paul would later ask Philemon to welcome Onesimus as he for as he as he were. You know, Paul should, could charge Onesimus debts to Paul. You know, because when when Paul wrote to Philemon and and sent him the letter, and he told him that whatever debt that Onesimus owed charged to Paul's account. See, this is true fellowship. Christians give to one another and care for one another because they belong to one another. Listen, real faith and love will result in a concern for fellowship. There's no place in the body of Christ for individualism and no place that, that we do not care about others. The concern for fellowship will also motivate Philemon to forgive Onesimus. Failure to do so would have led to a divide in the fellowship among Onesimus and now and, 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 and all, all the believers. See, by having a church in his home, failing to forgive Onesimus, Onesimus would have caused a divide in the fellowship of, of, of the believers that, that, uh, that Philemon had in his home. But by forgiving Onesimus, Philemon would maintain the harmony, the peace, and the unity of the Colossian church. The word effective, effectual in the New King, in the King James Version, translated energies, which means literally powerful. Such an action of forgiveness would send a powerful message to the church about the importance of fellowship, even among slaves and masters. Remember in Galatians 3 and 28, I'm going to read out the New King James Version. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male or female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. For giving a fellow believer, no matter what their offense, makes a strong statement of concern of fellowship. So the third character of forgiveness is the willingness to share. Philemon had a real faith in the Lord and he desired fellowship with others. See, the church met in his home. It would be uncommon for strangers to come to his services that which they receive an open heart and hand. Paul identified Philemon's sincere desire to share in the fellowship with others. Therefore, the message of the gospel needed to be real at all points, even toward Onesimus, which, he, which, which Paul wrote to, wrote, wrote to Philemon. It is that faith that allow us to share with others the message of the gospel. How we can share the message of Christ, the forgiveness of sins, how can we do that if we can't forgive ourselves? Philemon's willingness to forgive would be based on his knowledge and faith in his own forgiveness. See, when we forgive, it has to be based on our knowledge and our faith in how Christ forgave us. The fourth character of forgiveness is refreshes. Let me read Philemon 7. And I'm going to read out New King James Version. For we have great joy and consolation in your love because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed by you, brother. Philemon had a reputation for love, a fact that brought Paul much joy and comfort. Through Philemon, the hearts of the saints have been refreshed. People struggling, suffering, and hurting emotionally have been refreshed by Philemon. You know, refresh is a military term. It's after an after army or, or, or after the, the unit had a, long, had a long march and it was time for them to rest, that was called the time of refreshing. Philemon brought troubled people rest and renewal. He was a peacemaker. Philemon, as far as we know, was not an elder, deacon, or a teacher in the church. More than likely, he was a businessman, but he was a man of instinctive kindness, a source of blessing to everyone. That kind of person Paul knew could be counted on to forgive. Philemon knew how to be refreshing. He was able to revive and restore his brothers and sisters to faith. His love and generosity was replenished and stimulated them. Philemon also encouraged Paul by his love and by his loyalty. Are you refreshing influence to others? 
or does your attitude and temperament add to the burden they carry? Instead of draining others' energy and motivation with complaints and problems, replenish their spirits by encouragement, love, and by a helpful attitude. Paul rejoiced in the fact that others, as well as Onesimus, would find rest through Philemon. Just think, it's much easier to cast blame than to fix the problem. Paul was asking Philemon to offer refreshment, rest and ease to Onesimus. Forgiveness truly refreshes the body, the mind, and the soul. Might that be Onesimus in your life? Someone who rubs you the wrong way. Someone you may have forgiven in word only. But remember, forgiveness has the character of laboring and God's work to forgive and be forgiven. The character of loving, looking beyond the transgression. The character of sharing, offer effective, active forgiveness. And the character of refreshing, to offer others the rest, the rest and the peace that you have in Christ. Just a word, get over to midweek. Remember, join us Sunday at 10, at 10 o'clock at, 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 at school. If you, can't, if you can't join us in person, join us online just as you're listening right now. And God bless you and enjoy the rest of your week.